The final week in July finds us beginning to discuss some miscellaneous leadership subjects, and we're going to begin with one-on-one -on -one meetings. Good morning. Today is July 29th, 2013. Those of you that have uh, attended one of our leadership programs or read the 10 competencies of outstanding leadership realize that I am a huge champion of one-on-one -on -one meetings with team members. Over the years, I've gotten a lot of questions and some pushback on using them and wanted to spend a little time talking about them today. First, the why. One-on-one -on -one meetings serve both an efficiency and a connectivity purpose. The efficiency comes by a leader's ability to defer ad hoc requests for time or interruptions until a regular one-on-one -on -one meeting. This is a powerful tool because it also conditions team members to wait to discuss routine things until the one-on-one -on -one meeting it comes up. The connectivity piece is important because it allows the team member an open forum to discuss, to discuss issues important to him or her, while you can also talk about projects, status, and other operational elements. Effective one-on-one -on -one meetings are equal parts relational, operational, and developmental. The most effective ones begin with the team member talking about their items first and the leader doing healthy, healthy doses of listening. Now the how, and I will also share some of the pushback I've heard over the years. How and when are up to you, certainly. If you have a nice, stabilized environment with a well-formed team, you can meet individually maybe twice a month for 30 minutes. If your environment is changing, toxic, or extremely new, meet more frequently and longer. Evolve to the twice a month or even a once a month model, but start out more frequently. Some of the objections I have heard include, I always have an open door policy and they can talk with me anytime and I'm always talking with them. Well, that might be true, but that is a horribly inefficient model and it also produces an environment where you will be making more decisions than you should be. Deferring discussions will often force team members to make routine decisions without your intervention. Another common objection is the lack of time to perform individual meetings. This one is really easy to debunk when you compare how much of your time is lost in interruptions and impromptu meetings that could easily be deferred to a regularly scheduled one-on-one -on -one meeting. The final common objection relates to the frequency of group meetings. You know, I, I hear people say all the time, I have department meetings that are pretty open, why do I need a one-on-one? -on -one? The easy answer to that is you're hearing only a small percentage of feedback in a group situation. You have team members that, no matter how comfortable you make it, will not share issues, suggestions, and ideas publicly. They will only do it in a private setting with you. Take care, everybody, and have a great week. And next week, the uh, first part of August, we're going to tackle some more miscellaneous leadership uh, skills and uh, processes. Have a great week.